What's up guys? It's Lisa with Letter Rip Tater Chip Channel and today I am going to do an album review and that is of Cannibal Corpse's Red Before Black. So this album, I know I'm a little behind on it. Um, it came out November last year in 2017. Um, we were kind of a little behind on buying CDs as it is. Um, you know, we had some personal stuff last year that we had to take care of. Instead of, unfortunately, buying things, we had to kind of wait. Um, but for some reason with this album, it kind of was under our radar. Like, we didn't even know it was coming. Um, it was really odd. It was just like all of a sudden, they're like, hey, new album. <laughs> We're like, oh, okay, interesting. Um, so we finally got around to buying it a couple months ago, and we've had it and I'll just give my opinions on it. Um, so the album is around 46 minutes. Um, there's 12 songs on it, which is decent, decent amount. Um, most of the songs are around three or four minutes. Um, some of them are really quick. Some of them, for Cannibal Corp songs, actually are kind of lengthy, which is really nice. So when I first listened to this album, um, and I started it right off the bat, I gotta say, I really wasn't too impressed, but as I got further into it, I was like, yeah, I can really get into this, and then after listening to it a couple times, um, definitely digging it. So the first couple songs, I got my notes here, just because I have the shittiest memory in the world. Um, the first two songs, so the first one is Only One Will Die, and the second one is Red Before Black. Um, so. These two songs, it's your typical Cannibal Corpse songs. Um, there's really nothing um, in particular about them that really sticks out or anything. Just fast-paced, in-your-face kind of songs, which you would expect from them. Um, so that's how the album starts off. Um, once it gets to number three, that's when it really takes a turn for me and I really started enjoying the album. Um, so number three is Code of the Slashers. Um, it starts sludgy, which is really different for them, but I really kind of digged it. Um, and then after about a minute, it kind of picks up and, you know, gets rolling and um, really gets into the faster paced stuff. Um, and then it kind of sprinkles in the sludgy stuff every once in a while. And that kind of had like a Ron and Christ feel to me, which is kind of cool. I love their stuff. Okay, so number four, it starts off with these really cool guitar harmonics that the two of them kind of play together. It's really neat. Um, and this song, it's got quite a few um, melodic parts in it, um, which is nice because with this song, it doesn't feel like I'm getting punched in the face continuously through the whole thing. Which, I mean, you know, I come to expect with, you know, their stuff, but it's kind of nice to have change of pace once in a while, so um, the song is really nice for that. Um, which that one is called Shedding My Human Skin. Typical name that you would um, get with them. So number five is called Remaimed, and... It starts off slow with drawn out guitars, again, very different for them, um, but then it picks up after about 30 seconds or so, just kind of really gets into it. Um, number six is Firestorm Vengeance, and for this one I wrote down lots of chugs, very chuggy. <laughs> um, and this song was interesting because some of the guitar parts and elements of it kind of reminded me of Alex Webster's side project, um, Blotted Science. If you've ever listened to that, it's got kind of the little, like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, just like technical kind of stuff. And that's really, really cool. Um, number seven, which is Heads Shoveled Off, and number eight, Corpus Delicti. Uh -huh. um, again, really typical what you'd normally think you would get with Cannibal Corpse song. Um, nothing to point out really with those. Number nine is Scavenger Consuming Death. Um, so this one, it's very bass heavy. A lot of Alex to the forefront, which is 
cool because, you know, in my opinion, he's one of the best um, bassists out there. Um, just really cool. And um, it's one of their longer songs. And it's just a very enjoyable song. Like I said, really um, focused more on bassy sounds, um, which is nice. Number 10, In the Midst of Ruin. Um, this one just has really interesting guitar sounds. Um, different direction than most of their other songs. So again, um, different pace, just a nice, um, kind of different way they've gone. Um, number 11, Destroyed Without a Trace. Um, this is just a good song, not really a whole lot to say about it. Very nice song. Um, number 12 is Hideous Icker, and this is the last song. And it just really nicely rounds out the album. It kind of has elements of the whole thing rolled into one. Um, it's just a, a nice way to end the album. So, my opinions of it. Um, if you've never listened to Cannibal Corpse, and you've kind of thought about getting into them, but you weren't really sure, or whatever, I th this would definitely be a good album to pick up. Um, like I said, it's got quite a few songs that you would typically um, get with Cannibal Corpse with most of their other albums. And then it's got a few other songs that are slightly different than what they normally do. Um, but like I said, it's a nice change of pace. And um, for those people that might not necessarily be into the always like slamming in your face, heavy, thrashy stuff that they do, um, there's a couple of songs in there that really kind of satisfy that. Um, so it's really cool. And then if you've been listening to Cannibal Corpse, you know, since they began in the 80s and you haven't picked this album up yet, you weren't sure or whatever, d definitely get it. Um, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. So hopefully you guys check it out. If you have it already, um, let me know what you think of it, which one's your favorite song. Um, if you hate the album, let me know too. I don't know. <laughs> there could be a few of you out there. Um, but otherwise, I enjoyed it. All right. Remember, guys, let it rip, tater chip.